So in this video, I'm going to be looking at the type of center forward that would actually suit Ten Hag's system, analyzing what I would refer to as secondary striker options for United, as well as looking at three elite level strikers that United should be targeting next summer. So the transfer window is now shut until at least January, but the sides who end up with the best summer transfer windows, or just transfer windows in general, don't wait until the opening day to plan their strategy, and look for targets in a given position. Clubs like Manchester City, Bayern Munich, Liverpool and AC Milan, who have all been extremely shrewd in the transfer market market over recent years, getting huge value for money and constantly being able to replace and upgrade their squad because of their long-term planning. Now long-term planning and Manchester United aren't words that are synonymous with each other, but I thought that given Ten Hag has revitalised the squad, now looking like a firm top four contender, it probably would be interesting to look beyond this season to next season, where United could actually mount a serious challenge for the title. But of course the squad would have to be improved, and so in this series we're going to be looking at four of my long-term targets for Manchester United to sign, either in January if possible, but most likely next summer. But before we go any further, a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN, which works to protect your data online by rerouting 100% of your network traffic through their secure and encrypted servers, which works to mask your device's IP address, stopping big tech and advertisers from collecting and selling your data. It will also give you access to geo-restricted content, such as the stuff that's on Netflix. If you're in the UK, you can watch Netflix from America, from Canada, because ExpressVPN allows you to change your location to up to 94 different countries. They were also rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar because of their 24 seven customer support, ease of use, and having server technology that makes it physically impossible for even ExpressVPN themselves to store your data. So ExpressVPN really is your all-in-one VPN provider. I personally use ExpressVPN all the time and you can too by clicking the link in the description and signing up today to get three months free. Yes, that's three months free if you click the link in the description today. So a big thank you to ExpressVPN. With Cristiano Ronaldo likely leaving at the end of his contract next summer, one of United's priority positions should be a centre forward. And so I'm going to go through three main options in this video, analysing the one that would be my main target. But before we get into any options, we first need to outline what Manchester United would actually need from a centre forward. So Ten Hag is a manager aligned with the Cruyffin school of thought, so falls into the same tactical style category as managers like Guardiola and Arteta. Now Rinas Mikkels, the manager who coached Cruyff during the 60s and 70s at Ajax and Barcelona, and also the Dutch national team in the late 80s, was famed for using a very positionally fluid setup. He deployed Cruyff as a false nine a number of times, but with the Dutch national side in the late 80s, Marco van Basten was used more as a traditional number nine, an advance forward if you like. The same goes for Cruyff, who at Barcelona initially used Michael Landrop as a centre forward, who was more of a playmaker with Baquero in behind and two wide forwards like Stoichkov and Gojko Cheka either side. But then Romario came in in 1993 and was much more of an advanced goal scoring forward. Even Ten Hag himself has alternated the type of centre forward he uses, having used Dusan Tadic as a false nine in his early Ajax side, before then bringing in Sebastian Hallerin as more of a target man towards the end of his Ajax tenure. Pep Guardiola as well was the one who revolutionised football by using Lionel Messi as a false nine at Barcelona, also using Gabriel Jesus in that role, which he now plays in for Mikel Arteta. However, both Aguero and Haaland have been used in more advanced forward roles by Guardiola. And so the theme of the centre forward in the Cruyffian school of thought is not strict and really depends on the players available to the manager. If a top level goal scorer is available, then they are deployed more as a traditional centre forward. But if that type of player isn't in the squad, we are more likely to see the use of a false nine. And so for Ten Hag's Manchester United, I think a top level goal scorer should be the main target, playing as an out and out striker with two wide attackers, playing as natural wingers such as Anthony and Sancho holding their width in the side, or at least one natural winger stationed in a wide position with maybe an inside forward like Marcus Rashford providing the runs into goal scoring positions from a wide position as well. The centre forward needs to be as close to being an elite goal scorer as possible, have an exceptional movement in and around the box, as well as a pace to run in behind the back line higher up the pitch when the attack his transition quickly. He could either be an advanced forward sitting higher up the pitch and providing a movement in behind the back line and into one-on-one -on -one positions, as someone like Marco van Basten did or Erling Haaland does, or alternatively Ten Hag could use more of a deeper lying false nine type of forward, who can drop off between the lines and link the play, as Landrop did for Cruyff, Gabriel Jesus does for Arteta, or what Tadic did for Ten Hag at Ajax. With this type of centre forward, Ten Hag would probably have to use at least one inside forward rather than two natural wingers. 
corners in order to provide the movement in behind into central positions that a deep lying forward wouldn't provide as often. So before I get into my three main options, let me go through a few other well talked about other options and break down why they aren't in my top three. The first striker in this category is Lille's 22 year old Canadian forward Jonathan David, who I think is a pretty good all round forward, capable of linking the play with his back to goal, having good ball control and close dribbling in tight areas, whilst also being able to run the channels and being a good finisher inside the box as well. However, I don't think he's elite level at the moment. He did score a respectable 15 goals in 38 league and games last season and 13 in 37 games a season before as well, as well as three goals in eight Champions League games last campaign. But I still think he's a level below what United need at the moment and you can see this from his FB ref report as well as he does overperform his non-penalty XG and his ball progression metrics outside of the box such as dribbles and progressive passes are decent. His output isn't elite by any means and so I think he needs a move to maybe a side like Crystal Palace, Brighton or Leeds for a season or two, developing his game and then making that big move to a top level club. The second player in this category is Espanyol's 27 year old Spaniard Raul de Thomas, who was linked with Manchester United towards the end of the transfer window and it looked like Ronaldo could possibly steal the part. And to be honest, his striking technique is very reminiscent of Ronaldo, with quite a stiff technique, enabling him to drive the ball with pinpoint direction and power. And this is why he's very prolific from long range. But not just that, he's also prolific in general, scoring 17 goals in 34 La Liga games last season, being a very good shooter inside of the box, and also able to to create space and attack the ball from crossing situations, being a very good finisher with his head. Like David, his FB ref report shows he is very accomplished outside of the box, linking the play and progressing the ball forward, but like the Lille striker, I think he's a level below what United need, and would probably be an excellent alternative option for United off the bench, but I do think other players on the market are a level above him. The final player in this category is Ivan Tony, who I do actually rate higher than Jonathan David and Raul de Thomas, and a player who I do think would be a good fit for a few different top level clubs and so is ready for that next big move. Unlike the other two who are more all-round centre forwards capable of doing a bit of everything, Tony specialises more in the area of being a deep line forward, having the physicality along with the technique and subtlety as well as the ball control to link the attack in a way that reminds me of someone like Didier Drogba. He's very physically strong and so can take the ball into his chest or feet and hold off defenders, but around the box he has the playmaking ability that distinguishes him from other forwards, reminding me a bit of how Harry Kane works at Tottenham, being the centre point of the attack, enabling Brentford to bounce the ball into his feet and have him use his composure and vision to find runners ahead with perfectly weighted passes. This composure also extends to when he's in front of goal as he does not panic under pressure when a goal scoring opportunity presents itself and can also score a variety of different finishes, which I always think is a good sign for a striker as it shows they can put the ball into the back of the net even if the system or type of service they receive changes. When we look at his FB ref report, we can see that he excels when it comes to moving the ball into the final third and creating chances, ranking in the 85th percentile for progressive passes and the 87th for XG assisted. And this is down to his excellent vision and weight of pass outside and around the box making him the ideal deep line forward, allowing his side to feed the ball into his feet and using him as a wall to bounce the ball off and get runners moving ahead of him. But unlike many deep line forwards, he himself has the playmaking ability to find these runners with well-weighted through balls. He ranks quite low for his goal scoring metrics, though he is slightly overperforming his non-penalty XG, which tells me that whilst he may not be as prolific as some of the other strikers that I'll come on to, in a better side where he'll without doubt get more chances, his goal scoring numbers should increase dramatically. From what they are at Brentford as from the eye test you can see he's a composed clinical finisher when he gets the opportunity. Whilst I think there are better options and more clinical finishers on the market for Manchester United, I still think Ivan Tony has a potential to move into that elite level category over the next few seasons and any top side who is specifically looking for a deep line forward should be considering him. I think he'd be a fantastic option for Liverpool as a Roberto Firmino upgrade, playing the more withdrawn role in Klopp's front three, providing the playmaking ability for the two wide forwards either side of him, Lewis Diaz and Mo Salah. But the three strikers that I think Manchester United should be targeting are Victor Osimhen of Napoli, Lataro Martinez of Inter Milan and Dusan Vlahovic of Juventus. In terms of age, all three are still relatively young, with Lataro being the oldest at 25, Osimhen being 23 and Vlahovic being 22. All three do play in Serie A and I would consider them all to be elite level strikers at this point. However, they do have stylistic differences. Vlahovic is an advanced forward who I would compare stylistically to Erling Haaland, being a tall, physical and athletic centre forward forward, standing at around 6 foot 3 in height, but still being incredibly agile and quick, enabling him to make those sharp runs in behind the back line like we've seen Haaland do at City this season. But like Haaland, Vlahovic isn't your typical tall, clunky forward. He's very good at linking the play with his back
back to goal when he has to and has excellent ball control in congested areas. However, obviously it's his goal scoring that stands out. He's just got the inherent goal scoring instinct around the box, enabling him to position himself in the perfect goal scoring position. And this has been seen as he scored 21 goals in 37 Serie A games in 2020-2021 for Fiorentina before hitting 24 in 36 games last campaign for La Viola and Juve, 29 in 45 appearances in all competitions. This sees him sit in the 90th percentile for non-penalty goals over the last 365 days, recording 0.59 non-penalty goals per 90 and over performance of his non-penalty XG, which incidentally sits in the 71st percentile of 0.18 per 90, which itself is in the 95th percentile, showing that Vlahovic is an exceptional finisher. And I believe he's what you would call a generational talent, capable of competing with Haaland and Mbappe over the next few seasons if he's utilised in the right system at a top side. Lataro Martinez is a striker who is different stylistically and in terms of body composition to Vlahovic, being much more of a deep lying forward with a shorter, stockier build, whereas Vlahovic will retain a higher position in the attack on the shoulder of the last defender, Lataro will play more like Harry Kane or Karim Benzema, dropping off from the forward line in order to link the attack, and he is fantastic with his back to goal, as Inter Milan's goal against AC Milan in the Milan derby this season showed, where he dropped off, dragging a centre back out of the back line, received the ball to feet, and not only was he able to hold off the defender but he was able to find a pass into Correa and Brozovic similar to Eriksen against Arsenal was able to make a charging run from deep into the space created in the back line because of Lataro Martinez's movement deep ultimately allowing Correa's through ball to set Brozovic free into a one-on-one -on -one where he was able to slot the ball past Mike Magnan in the AC Milan goal. Had Lataro retained a higher position in the attack this space and therefore this chance would not have been created. But Lotaro Martinez isn't just a link man and a space creator for others. He also offers a creative and goal scoring threat around the box, being a fantastic striker off the ball with his trademark being his first time volleying which he is one of the best in the world at and just overall his composure and striking ability has improved massively over the last few years and this is reflected in his statistical output. We can see that he like Vlahovic ranks incredibly highly for goal scoring metrics sitting in the 92nd percentile for non-penalty goals and the 94th for non-penalty XG which does look like it exceeds Vlahovic's goal scoring metrics however I would say that Lataro Martinez's non-penalty XG is higher than the Serbians largely because he plays in an inter side that creates a lot more chances than either the Fiorentina or Juventus side that Vlahovic has played in over the past year and even though Lataro Martinez does overperform his non-penalty XG by 0.04 per 90 he ranks in the 60th percentile for that which shows that whilst Lataro like Vlahovic is still an elite level goal scorer Vlahovic statistically is a better finisher and in a better side that create more chances Vlahovic's goal scoring rate should increase further. Victor Osimhen is closer stylistically to Vlahovic than Lataro being a taller physically dominant advanced forward who sits high and looks to make runs in behind the centre backs as the Juve striker does. I don't think he's as good in intricate spaces as either Vlahovic or Lotaro, but he is the best when it comes to holding up the ball under pressure via a direct pass into his feet or chest, being a very old school kind of striker comparable to someone like Didier Drogba. In Napoli's recent game against Liverpool, he absolutely bullied Virgil van Dijk, and that's his unique selling point, doing this better than almost every striker in Europe at the moment. But how would each of these three fit into Ten Hag's system and who would be the best fit for the side? Well all three wouldn't look out of place as a focal point of Ten Hag's attack, though the attacking patterns and movements in behind them would be slightly different between each striker. With Vlahovic as United centre forward, Ten Hag would have a striker who while still being able to receive the ball to feet and link the play quite well, the majority of the time he's going to be sitting higher up the pitch and looking to make those sharp runs down the outside or in between the two centre backs. And so you'd imagine that would perfectly suit the likes of Fernandes, Eriksen and Sancho, who have the vision and weight of pass to thread those passes in behind the back line to find Vlahovic's runs. In terms of sole goal scoring, Vlahovic is the best out of the three I would say, just having a sixth sense for where the goal is, reading the game well and moving accordingly into the exact positions where he knows there's going to be the opportunity of a chance coming. Whether this is to make a double run to firstly create a space by dragging the defender over before darting into that space that they vacated, or dropping back to open a crossing lane from the flank and from here almost instinctively being able to receive the ball around the box and know exactly which type of strike to perform, having pinpoint accuracy to place the ball out of the keeper's reach. Like Erling Haaland, he's a serial goal threat meaning that he can score a variety of different finishes from one-on-ones using his pace to race through on goal to instinctive strikes inside of the box. 
headers from crosses and even long range strikes from outside of the box, with him being a very capable free kick taker. Vlahovic is the caliber of striker that I think can come in and score between 20 and 25 goals in his first season in the Premier League in the right side. However, the centre forward position, particularly under a manager like Ten Hag, requires other skill sets besides just goal scoring. So towards the end I will come on to whether Vlahovic's finishing makes him my first choice. Now Osim Hen like Vlahovic has the typical poacher instinct inside of the box, being very good at anticipating where the ball is going to be moved and breaking ahead of his marker to then receive the ball and take the chance. I would say that Vlahovic is a better finisher than Osim Hen, being a bit more cultured in his finishing and also having a greater variety of finishes that he can score from as well as being more composed and accurate in his shooting positions around the box, which can be seen as his non-penalty goals minus his non-penalty XG, which is essentially how many more or less goals per 90 a player has scored than what the XG model predicts he should have scored from the chances he's had. So if your metric is positive, then you are outperforming your XG, whereas if you are negative, it's because you are underperforming. Osim Hen actually hits his non-penalty XG exactly at the time of writing, with 0.00 and ranking in the 52nd percentile, when compared against every other forward in Europe's top 5 leagues over the past 365 days, whereas Vlahovic ranks in the 94th percentile with plus 0.18 per 90, meaning that if Vlahovic sustained this overperformance over the course of a 50 game season, he would have scored scored a full 9 goals more than the XG model would have expected him to. Statistically that tells us that Vlahovic is not just a better finisher than Osimhen, but a player who can compete with the best finishers in the world, and that really is the selling point with Vlahovic. He's first and foremost a goal scorer. Awesome Hen, on the other hand, has a lot more other elements to his game. Whilst Vlahovic certainly isn't slow and is a physical specimen, Awesome Hen is still a level above in terms of being able to physically bully centre backs and therefore is able to be used a lot more as a target man, with his chest control from long passes from the back being probably the best out of any centre forward in Europe. Awesome Hen would thrive in the Premier League in the 90s, having that necessary mix of raw strength, aggression, and athletic and aerial ability. Combine this with his overall technical and finishing abilities as well, and you have a player in the mould of someone like Gabriel Batistuta, Christian Vieira, or Alan Shearer. So what Osim Hen lacks in raw finishing ability when compared against Vlahovic, he more than makes up for in other areas, whilst also being well versed in a high pressing system, currently under Luciano Spalletti at Napoli, which would solve a lot of the pressing issues that there seems to be with Ronaldo as a centre forward in Ten Hag's side. Lataro Martinez is even more contrasting to Vlahovic than Osimhen was, being much more of a deeper line forward, whereas Vlahovic is a poacher and Osimhen is an advanced target man, with both preferring to retain higher positions, looking to move in behind the back line, rather than dropping off in front of the back line in order to link the attack, as we see Lataro Martinez do for both Inter Milan and Argentina. Lataro plays this role because he's a fantastic technical centre forward, being able to receive the ball and turn away from oncoming defenders on a dime, using his low centre of gravity, strength and agility to hold off and turn centre backs in a way that we don't see from Osimhen or Vlahovic. If I compared Osimhen to players like Drogba and Batistuta, I'd compare Vlahovic to a mixture of Erling Haaland and Ruud van Nistelrooy, having Haaland's athleticism but being similar stylistically to van Nistelrooy, mainly focusing his game on playing between the width of the two posts and in the box. If I was to compare Lataro Martinez to anyone it would have to be Sergio Aguero, and you can see the stylistic similarities quite easily. Lataro, like Aguero, is much more of a complete forward, being able to drop into spaces behind the midfield line, receive the ball and either dribble past an opposition player or find a forward pass to move the ball into the final third. Lataro would be the type of centre forward that Marcus Rashford would suit playing with, as Rashford is at his best when he makes those diagonal runs from that wide left position, in between the fullback and centre back, in behind the back line, as he did against Liverpool and Arsenal. With strikers like Vlahovic and Osimhen, Rashford is going to have to sit wider for longer, as the centre backs aren't going to be drawn out of the back line as much, and so those spaces won't open up as frequently for Rashford to race into. However, with Lotaro dropping off to link the play between the lines, not only is this going to open up more space for Rashford, but also for Bruno Fernandes, who is a creative attacker who can also finish as well, and so Lotaro's deeper movement provides the perfect openings for him to make central runs ahead of play into. Now, advanced forwards like Vlahovic and Osimhen would be ideal if Ten Hag wanted to use two natural wingers in Jadon Sancho and Anthony from either flank, as without Rashford from the left making those runs into central positions, with Lotaro Martinez dropping off between the lines, there really is only going to be Bruno Fernandes breaking into the space ahead, which could lead to United failing to open up the opposition's defensive shape because of a lack of movement ahead of the ball into central positions. Vlahovic and Osimhen would instead provide the central runs in behind the back line, while simultaneously 
consistently keeping the centre backs in the back line. The opposite of Lotaro Martinez, which instead of opening up space in behind the centre backs, it instead maximises the space in front of the centre backs, between the midfield and defensive lines for players like Fernandes and Eriksen to drift into and receive the ball in these pockets. That's essentially the positional role that Haaland plays for Pep stretching the defensive line and creating space for De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva with the two wingers Foden and Mares also pulling the fullbacks deeper and wider with their high positions. However, for Manchester United, I think that Lotaro's type of centre forward would suit the team best as a whole, as Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford would both massively benefit from a deeper lying forward in the attack. And I think United in general do look better when it's Rashford, along with one of Sancho or Anthony on the opposite flank, rather than Sancho and Anthony on both flanks. For me, I think it's because because United already have finishers like Rashford and Fernandes in the attack, and so they don't need to rely on a centre forward as much for pure goals, and so Lotaro's interplay and creativity between the lines, and Osim Hen's ability to control long direct passes upfield, and play more as a target man, both becomes a lot more valuable to the overall system, which is why I'd prefer those two to Vlahovic, not just for the reason I just explained, but also because I think out of possession, Osim Hen and Lotaro do suit an aggressive pressing system a lot more than Vlahovic does. Now before I come on to why I would prefer Lotaro Martinez to Osim Hen, let's first look at which sides would suit the Napoli and Juve strikers. Well I think Vlahovic would work best at a side that just need a world class finisher as the icing on their attacking cake. Having top level creators in behind the Serbian to provide a high quality and most importantly a high quantity of chances as if he is given the opportunities he's finishing is that good that he's going to be making a massive difference to the output of the whole attack. To me, Bayern Munich seems like the perfect place for him. Bayern need a Lewandowski replacement, just from a goal scoring point of view, if anything else, and I do think that Vlahovic could provide this long term. Being the type of striker that could bag 25 goals plus in a Bundesliga season, and in a few seasons, he could be doing Lewandowski numbers in the mid 30s. He's currently at risk of being a player that bursts onto the scene at a world class level, but stagnates after around 18 to 24 months because of injury or the team he's in, and ends up not progressing as they were predicted to. Being at Bayern in the Bundesliga, Vlahovic will consistently be in a side that supplies a lot of chances, enabling him to rack up his goal numbers, as well as allowing him to compete for the Champions League in order to cement himself as one of Europe's elite strikers. He'd probably cost Bayern around 80 to 90 million pounds next summer, having been signed for 65 million pounds in January of this year, but he's still only in his early 20s and would be the long term Lewandowski replacement that Nagelsmann desperately needs. For Osim Hen, I think a move to Chelsea would be the best move for him. Chelsea need a target man like centre forward who can attract both centre backs with his presence, creating space for others around him. And Osim Hen would definitely be able to fulfil this role. He'd also provide a defensive work rate that Lukaku never did, providing the pain in behind and the strength of Lukaku, whilst also being a threat in offensive aerial situations, being able to take advantage of Reese James and the Hakim ZX crosses from the right flank. Osim Hem would be expensive, likely around £85 million, but I do think because of his age and the fact that he has provided a high level of goal scoring output in his last few seasons in two different top five European leagues. And so I do think he's much better value for money than Lukaku was and could potentially fill the centre forward spot for the next decade at Chelsea. As for Lotaro, I think Manchester United would be the perfect place for him, likely costing United between £80 and £100 million, but I think it would be money well spent as he's the exact type of striker that United need and he's still not reached his peak and has the potential to be a truly elite level goal scorer, potentially giving United their first world class forward since Ibrahimovic or some may even argue since Robin van Persie left. His profile fits what Ten Hag would be looking for in a Ronaldo replacement and that's why Lotaro Martinez is a centre forward that I think United should sign next summer. Lotaro hit over 20 goals for the first time in Serie A last season, but each season he is constantly improving his goal scoring output, scoring 6 in his first season at San Siro in 1819, 14 goals in his second season, then 17 goals in his third season, and 21 goals in 35 games last season in Serie A. In the Premier League I would expect Lotaro to score around 15 goals in his first season, which once you factor in Lotaro's goal creating and linking of the play contributions, as well as his high level of defensive output, and you have a striker who could compete with Kane and Haaland for being the best striker in the league. The fact that he hasn't overperformed his non-penalty XG since being at Inter, underperforming it by two goals last season, tells me that while 
whilst Otaro isn't what you would call an elite level clinical finisher like Vlahovic or Haaland, the fact that he continues to score a high quantity of goals suggests that he has the ability to create chances for himself via his movement, and if he is put into a different side in a different league, the amount of goals he scores should remain quite consistent to what he is producing now. If a striker is massively overperforming his non-penalty XG in the short term, whilst it is very impressive, they are likely going to revert to their mean eventually, and if their goals are coming from their clinical finishes, rather than their ability to create chances first and foremost, then we could expect to see a drop off in their goal scoring output. Even if this does happen to Lotaro, which I don't think it would given the amount he's improving season on season, then his contributions outside of the box are still going to be hugely valuable and exactly what this Ten Hag side needs. Which is why I think Lotaro Martinez from Inter Milan is the striker that Ten Hag should sign next summer. So have I made the right choice? Who would you sign in the centre forward position for Manchester United? Leave a comment in the comment section, check out some of my other videos in the description, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on my videos and give the video a like if you enjoyed it as well.